I am thinking of a college campus whose simplicity and beauty will unobtrusively seep into a student's consciousness and quietly develop a standard of taste and judgment. I have identified myself with the upbuilding of an enterprise that seems to me of greater outlook and vaster significance than the ordinary college and with infinite possibilities. Miss Scripps' great ambition is that we shall be ready to try out new experiments, be a pioneer in the work of entering new fields, and that Scripps College shall illustrate academic freedom, that there shall be no clamp put on the search for truth in whatever direction it may be found. J.C. Harper, the first chair of the Scripps Board of Trustees. There is an educational reason for keeping the college small. This permits instruction to be individualized, adjusted to the needs of the student, and made genuinely intimate. Report of the Education Committee to the Board of Trustees, September 1926. To walk between the clipped hedges amid lemon blossoms at Vesper time, and watch the warm light lingering like a melody on the face of Mount Baldy is to know peace. Happy indeed is she who can see a hundred lighted windows and know that behind each one there lives a friend. Elizabeth Averill, editor of La Samuse, 1938. When Mrs. Fowler's committee had finished furnishing Toll Hall, a male trustee referred to Toll as luxurious. Margaret Fowler replied, Toll Hall is a very ordinary building, quietly furnished, but on account of good taste merely appears to be luxurious. In looking back upon our four years at Scripps, we sense the fullness of the Scripps ideal. The surroundings, the customs, and the people all contribute to it. I am not in sympathy with the so-called education which is imparted from an austere professor behind a desk to the docile students seated in front of him with a textbook as their only common meeting ground. Rather, I like to imagine a circle of teacher and students seated about a table or a hearth fire, stimulating one another's powers of thought and creating a mental capital which no textbook can supply. Miss Scripps' most permanent gifts were in the form of spiritual forces, which she set in motion and which revealed the innermost convictions of her life, rather than in the material forms seen only by the visible eye. Ernest Jaqua, founding president of Scripps College. You know, without vainglory, that you are better fitted for public service than many who now sit in high places. You know that you have the knowledge and the power and the spirit of justice within you that fits you for greater service than has yet fallen to your lot. I like to picture a college whose motto is not preparation for life, but life itself. Miss Scripps believed that education implies growth and that growth means change, 
progress. Education should never be safe or static. Where we are safe, we tend to linger, and then there would no longer be progress. I do not believe that Miss Scripps ever thought in static terms, but always toward growth and service. Mary B. Eyre. It is a truism that change will be the great constant of the future. Therefore, while we need to prepare our students for change, we must help them take on a good deal of ballast, intellectual and moral values, and excellent skills. The Scripps faculty is now engaged in redesigning the course of study that will be the best possible education for the future that our students will inhabit. I emphasize the faculty's role properly for theirs is the greatest responsibility in that area. While we are together, we will teach all the wisdom we can. But we know that there will come a day when each of our students will face eddies and floods, sandbars, hidden snags, deep currents and deceptive shallows by herself. We hope on that day she will know that in her differentness, her claim is no less than that of any other human being. And we hope she will defend, as though it were her own, those rights for others. Scripps will contribute by helping to free the best part of this nation, its women, to discover for themselves what life ought to be lived. They will create their own visions for a new time, a new century, and a new and better life. In Kippet Vita Nova. I believe the paramount obligation of a college is to develop in its students the ability to think clearly and independently and the ability to live confidently, courageously, and hopefully. Mm -hmm.